Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode of our weekly roundup. And for um, entertainment purposes, I did bring a prop. Take a seat. Does that look good? You no. like it? No, I'm not playing into your drama. Did you buy that? No. Okay, good. I found it downstairs. Moving forward, no weekly roundup, definitely weekly recap. <laughs> Let's progress. Okay, moving on. So, to start off this week, we just did some minor maintenance things in some of our properties. Um, I had my maintenance slash electrician slash HVAC guy <laughs> slash whatever reach out to us. Um, there was one of our properties that needed some outlets um, fixed. So, he reached out kind of independently and was like, hey, this is still on my list. Um, so, we got that set up and that was all taken care of. So, that's one thing that we can kind of check um the other thing that was pretty big um and brandy can go into more on this is regarding some partial payments for rent that we accepted um communication when we sign up tenants to live in our homes like communication has always been kind of like the number one like kind of preached thing like just communicate with us you know we'll we want to work with you um and so we had two situations this month so far where communication was absolutely key. Um, and if you want to chat about that a little bit more. Yeah. And so we never know what's going on with, with people's lives and things, things happen, things come up. So in, in social work, in real estate, in anything in the world, there's no such thing as an absolute. Um, so we do our best to follow our lease and hold our tenants accountable to our lease. However, as long as our tenants communicate with us, we're always willing to make accommodations to the best of our ability. And based on these two situations, we completely understood and we didn't want to hold um, any late fees for these certain situations because, again, it was very much out of their control. Um, just one of the things I, I wanted to talk about for educational purposes, it's not anything we're looking to do with our current tenants, mm -mm. is if you do accept any forms of partial payments, um, as long as the tenant's showing that they pay, you cannot evict a tenant. So it's kind of one of those things that's a slippery slope where if a tenant makes a partial payment for six months and then eventually you're fed up and you want to look at the eviction process, you can't because a judge is going to look at it and say, hey, you're currently accepting payments. They're making an attempt to pay, even though they're falling farther and farther behind each month, you, you're not going to be able to evict. So it's one of those things that normally what Rent Ready allows us to do is we can either turn on partial payments or we can block partial payments. So in general, we have partial payments blocked in all of our um, our houses. So that way, if it gets to that point where we do have to evict somebody, we do have that option. However, we always try to work with um, everybody. Um, we've been at this for almost two years now and we've never even considered um, evicting somebody. So that just kind of is a little bit of information of like different things you can do with Rent Ready and um, the importance of accepting um, partial payments. Yeah, and that's something like through these recaps and stuff. See, that's how I did. I did recap, not yeah, round up. Um, through these recaps a lot, you'll hear us talk about communication, communication within like us as a team with our you know other members, our electrician, you know construction. And even our tenants, like communication is everything in this business. And so um, it's something you guys will hear us touch on a lot every week during multiple episodes. And a lot of the times we like to do our communication through either email, Rent and Ready has a message system slash email system, and then through text message, just so that way there's, there's a paper trail. Mm -hmm. And that way it protects the tenant and it protects us because if a tenant requests maintenance and we don't, you know, through a text message... And, and we don't get to it, then that's our responsibility and we can be held liable for that. So that's why I always prefer some kind of written form of communication. And then if, if there's some confusion back and forth, then there's always time for a phone call. Yeah. Or some clarity if we need clarity on something. Um, so, yeah. And then another thing this week. So as we spoke last week, we have one of our tenants that's um, buying a house and she's uh, going to be vacating one of our properties. Um, so we post that property on Facebook marketplace and we were actually able to fill it. Um, we found a, um, a tenant that's going to be moving with some of her friends from Florida. 
We're going to make some accommodations. We're going to turn it from a long term to a midterm rental. Um, and the tenant will be month to month. That way it better uh, suits their needs. Um, I offer, I also offered to help be her real estate agent as they're looking to buy a property here. They just sold their property in Florida. So I, I'm really excited to be able to help this family moving forward. And it, it kind of reminded me of like, um, one of the other people I'm working with, with my real estate license, she moved from Tennessee to be up here closer to the family. And we will actually be closing on her property next Friday, um, first thing Friday morning. So that's pretty excited for her. So I was kind of able to share this story when I spoke with this future tenant on the phone. And so I think I, that conversation with her helped her feel a little bit better about, hey, listen, we got you. We'll, we'll help you get in here. We'll help you feel comfortable. And her big thing is we, me and my family just need somewhere to lay our heads. Um, we've reached out to several other places, Airbnbs. Um, for short term and they were extensively overpriced and they wouldn't allow their dogs and it was just a big headache and that's one of the big things we pride ourselves on here is allowing people's pets obviously within certain parameters Reason, but, yeah. but for the most part we allow almost all pets as of right now we have not said no to anybody no we're very much pet lovers here so i mean we've got one giant fur baby ourselves so and I, when I rented, I, you know, years and years ago, like it was very difficult finding something that accepted like me and my dog. So like I can understand. And so when we decided to do this, that was one thing that we were both very adamant on of like, we have to make sure that we allow pets. And one of the things we do is just our quarterly checks of the house. We always go into the tenants and let them know like, hey, we're not looking to, to know, look after you. We're just looking for any major concerns, water leaks, anything that could be a $500 fix, you know, a $100 fix that could quickly turn into a $2,000 fix to a $10,000 $10, fix. So most of these uh, walkthroughs are quick. They could be two, three, four minutes. And then they turn into 30 minutes because we're just sit there conversating with, with the tenant just about <laughs> in, in general. It's everyday life type stuff. So yeah. um, what yeah. else have we done this week? Uh, well, kind of, that's it, except for kind of our latest news as of yesterday. Oh, yeah. So one of the off-market deals that we had uh, went and looked at um, in St. Louis, I reached, it appeared that they had it under contract. That there was a um, inspection that was done. I reached out to the gentleman yesterday and said, hey, is there any update on this? And he said, yeah, the inspection went well. However, the individual is not able to get financing. So it's, it is available. So we informed them. We actually increased our offer by 3000 and said, hey, we'll offer you asking. Um, and he said, okay, well, I'll get back with you in a few days and let you guys know. So one of the keys is anytime you're working with, whether it's an on-market or off-market deal, is to consistently just follow up and check because you never know what's going to happen day to day. Um, you should at least check up on things at least once a week. And just kind of see what's going on worst case scenario they're either going to ignore you or they are not going to respond or they're going to ignore you or they're just going to tell you hey the the deal is sold we're done thanks for looking in but constantly checking back uh, on potential deals yeah yeah so hopefully keeping our fingers crossed on this one we both love that property so we're staying positive and optimistic. Um, the last thing I'd like to add that we kind of did this week and it kind of just popped into my head is I made a TikTok, guys. It's, it's pretty cool. Like, so we made a TikTok channel. We can leave the name of the, uh, our like search name um, in the description of this video. But do not be surprised if the cowboy hat makes an appearance on TikTok. With dancing. With dancing. Anywho, I mean, just saying, it could be fun. <laughs> if you guys have any questions about the video today or any of our other videos, please feel feel free to, to reach out to us or if we can help do anything to support you in your real estate journey. Um, like and subscribe. See you guys later.